Hello friends. Today our topic is joints in cement concrete pavements. Concrete pavement joints serve many functions like control of cracking, provision of load transfer, isolation of structures that move or behave differently, and provision of lane or shoulder delineation. The placement of joints at appropriate locations is essential in preventing random pavement cracking. Faulting, pumping, spalling, corner breaks, blow-ups, and mid-panel cracking are the results of poor joints. Joints in a concrete pavement can be either in transverse direction or they can be in longitudinal directions. Means these can run parallel to the direction of traffic or perpendicular to the direction of traffic. When they run parallel to the traffic, they are longitudinal joints, and when they are perpendicular to direction of traffic, then they are transverse joints. Based on their functions, joints in a cement concrete pavement can broadly be classified into four categories: construction joints, expansion joints, contraction joints, longitudinal joints. And we will discuss each of these joints in this session. First is construction joints. and these can be in both directions transverse as well as longitudinal transverse construction joints are made at the end of each day's work and longitudinal joints are made between lanes of a multi lane highway the purpose of such joints is to divide large pavement area into convenient size for paving when pouring of concrete is stopped at the end of the day or concrete paving is suspended due to any reason a construction joint is created in other words a construction joint is created when concrete slabs are constructed at different times and these joints can be in both directions transverse and longitudinal transverse construction joints which do not occur at regular joint location are generally tied with tie bars to prevent movement and this is important in multi lane highways key may be provided in such cases to ensure transfer because tie bars are not adequate for this purpose and this is the dimension of the key the total height here is 0.2 tt is the slab thickness and is a deformed tie bar and these key joints are used when construction joints are not placed at the location of contraction joints this is a but transverse construction joint here also t is the depth of the slab a groove of 10 to 12 mm wide and 20 to 25 mm deep is made and dowel is provided for transfer of the load dowel in one slab is provided with a sleeve to allow for movement both across and along the joint the next is expansion joints Expansion joints are transverse joints to allow expansion of concrete slab due to rise in average temperature in summer month. These are full depth joints and they prevent any tendency towards distortion, buckling, blow up or spalling. Now this is a full depth joint here between two slabs and dowel is provided between these two slabs for transfer of load. The width is 20 25 mm and a joint filler board of compressive material as per the details given in irc 15 is used to fill the gap between the two slabs and as i told you a dowel for transfer of load the expansion joints reduce compressive stresses and prevent the pavement from buckling but the overuse of these joints should be avoided because this may allow surrounding contraction joints to open over time which results in sealant or filler failure infiltration of water and incompressible material and also loss of load transfer can also result when the sealant material or filler material fails moreover these joints are difficult to maintain and get filled up with dirt and other incompressible material causing locking of joints and preventing expansion of the slab therefore their use should be kept at minimum they are not in use except near permanent structures like bridges or culverts then contraction joints 
These are transverse joints which relieve the tensile stresses in concrete pavement. And they are purposely made weak to relieve tensile stresses due to change in moisture content and temperature. These joints prevent formation of irregular cracks due to rest restraint in free contraction of the concrete. These are formed initially by sawing a groove of 3 to 5 millimeter and then this groove is subsequently widened and sealed with a sealant. Alternatively, in case of a semi-mechanized construction and minor works, the slot may be formed in a manner approved by the engineer in charge and it can be by pushing into the concrete a flat bar or plastic strip or the web of a T-bar using a suitable vibratory device, removing the bar subsequently and keeping the slot open. But it should be ensured that no spalling of concrete occurs while removing the bar. Such manually formed grooves are found to affect the riding quality, which is quite natural. This groove is made up to one third to one fourth of the depth of the slab. It will facilitate formation of natural cracks at this location extending to full depth of the slab. For high volume roads, these joints are provided with dowel bars to improve the continuity of the slab and improved performance of the joint. And the last is longitudinal joints. Longitudinal joints are joints in concrete pavement that are parallel to the pavement center line and are typically placed at the edges of traffic lanes. They are used to reduce warping stresses and uneven settlement of the subgrade. These joints are provided in multi-lane pavements and also when the pavement is more than 4 meters wide. This is the layout of the joints on one carriageway of a six-lane road. Now these are longitudinal joints which run parallel to the moving traffic and these are transverse joints. These are the tie bars which are provided to hold the slabs together and these are the doll bars. So these joints are parallel to the center line of the, of the road or you can say along the direction of moving traffic. These joints also relieve stresses due to warping. Top 10 to 20 millimeter depth of the joint is cut to a width of 6 to 8 millimeter for the purpose of sealing. Initially, a joint is cut to a depth of one third to one fourth of the slab thickness and then it creates a crack in the full depth of the concrete slab. Longitudinal joints are used to connect lanes that have been paved in separate passes. Tie bars are commonly used with these joints to ensure that the joints remain tight and that the lanes do not separate. So friends, these are four types of joints which are used in concrete pavements. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have a suggestion, please do write to me.